Good morning, everybody. It's March 1st, 2023. I'm meteorologist Bo Dodson. We take a look at your water vapor satellite loop this morning. You can see moisture streaming back into the region from the southwest. This is our next storm system, one of two that will impact the region over the next 48 to 72 hours. Now, this one will move through Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday night, bringing us some showers and thunderstorms. And then the next one arrives Thursday afternoon, Thursday night into Friday morning with widespread showers, thunderstorms, locally heavy rain. And we're going to have to keep an eye out for the risk of severe weather as we move through this afternoon. And then again, Thursday afternoon into Friday morning. Let's take a look at some of the data that will indicate whether or not we're going to have severe weather. First off, let's look at the Storm Prediction Center severe weather outlook. Now this may shift around a little bit today. Would not be surprised if the slight risk was even moved farther northward as we do have some risk of large hail this afternoon and tonight. Some of the soundings, the upper air soundings that we look at show just enough cape for hail up to the size of quarters and maybe even larger than quarters. Some of the data shows up to golf ball size hail. So we'll just have to watch the thunderstorms as they develop this afternoon and evening. I'll send out weather app messages if necessary. We see this light green zone. That's where the lightning is expected, but not severe weather. The dark green zone is a level one severe weather risk and the yellow zone is a level two. Now again, this may shift around a little bit. They could extend this a little further north. The yellow zone could come into Kentucky in the boot heel. We'll see how it goes, but the bottom line is whether the storm prediction center moves around the colors or not. The forecast will remain the same. A chance of some hailers this afternoon into this evening and maybe a smaller risk of damaging wind and a small risk of a tornado. Now, the severe weather risk will extend into tomorrow as well. So we move on to the day two severe weather outlook. Now a severe weather outbreak is likely tomorrow and tomorrow night across parts of Arkansas, Texas, and Louisiana. And then we see the risk extends into our region as well, but a lower risk. Again, the light green zone is where lightning is expected, but not severe weather. And the dark green zone and the yellow zone is where it's a level one and a level two risk up to a level four risk down here in Arkansas. This could shift around a little bit. We're not quite as confident about severe weather Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, and Friday morning. The reason is we're not sure about CAPE. And remember, CAPE is energy that thunderstorms eat into. And you need CAPE if you want severe weather. You need CAPE. And so CAPE is in question with this storm. There remains some differences in the track of the area of low pressure with this system. Some models are farther north. Some models are further south. And we're still trying to figure out exactly where the low will track. If the low were to track, say, towards Columbia, Missouri, and then towards Springfield, that places us in a greater risk of severe weather. If the low tracks farther south, say St. Louis to Mount Vernon to Carbondale, then that pushes the severe weather risk farther to our south and east. That small difference makes a big difference when it comes to the risk of severe weather. Bottom line is let's keep an eye on the risk of severe weather over the next 72 hours. As we move into the day three severe weather outlook, they do include the Pennyroll area as the storm system pulls away in a risk of severe weather. We'll just have to see how quickly it departs on Friday. Also on Friday, I would not be surprised to see some reports of small hail if any showers and thunderstorms develop as the cold core of the system moves over us. There is some indication of some cape developing and sometimes that can produce numerous reports of small hail, P to dime size hail, sometimes slightly larger. They can even cover the ground under certain conditions. So we'll keep an eye on Friday as well for some reports of hail and we'll keep an eye on how fast the system departs and that will dictate whether we still have a risk of severe weather Friday morning as the system pulls away from the region. Now remember I mentioned to you the track of the low is important when it comes to the risk of severe weather. Notice how far south and east that the GFS model is with the track of this low as we move through Thursday afternoon and Thursday night, it tracks the low right over our local area. Now this is much further south and east 
than say the EC model. The EC model is farther to the northwest. This makes a big change in rain totals. It also makes a change in the severe weather outlook. So if the GFS is correct and the low tracks farther south and east, then our risk of heavy rain and severe weather will push slightly south and east as well. Either way, I do expect between now and Friday afternoon one to two inches of rain in the region with pockets of two to four inches of rain possible where thunderstorms train over the same area. Let's keep a close eye on the flash flood risk and remember, avoid flooded roadways. Now here is the EC model. Notice already here, it's already farther northwest than the GFS and as it tracks to the northeast, the low tracks over the St. Louis area. These lows each represent one run of the EC model. These are ensembles. How this works is that when they're clustered tightly together, our confidence in the forecast increases. Notice that there's a cluster over St. Louis back towards uh, Quincy, Illinois. Somewhere in here is where the EC tracks the low. And remember that the GFS was farther south and east and a little faster as well. As we move out in time, the low tracks into northern Indiana on the EC model. So there are significant differences even in this short time frame of where this low will track. And we'll just have to keep an eye on it. We are in an excessive rainfall risk today, a marginal risk with a slight risk to our south. This simply means that flash flooding is possible with the heavier thunderstorms. But as we move into day two, we're in a level one, two, and three risk, a marginal slight and moderate risk. Now this only goes up to high risk, so a four scale, one, two, three, we're in a level three across parts of Illinois, Missouri, Kentucky, Tennessee, with a slight risk over the rest of the region. There is a good chance of flash flooding Thursday afternoon into Friday morning from this system over some of our counties. There's already a flood watch for the Missouri Boot Hill in Northwest Tennessee, and additional counties are likely to be added to the flood watch from the National Weather Service out of Paducah, and we'll have to see if the St. Louis office issues any for their area as well. Bottom line is that locally heavy rain is likely with thunderstorms later today, tonight, and then again Thursday afternoon into Friday morning. And some flash flooding is possible. Avoid flooded roadways. It seems like every time we have a flood event, somebody drives through the floodwaters and has to be rescued. So we have an active period of weather over our coming 72 hours. Let's look at some future cast radars. We'll look at the eight We'll look at the HRRR model, and as we move through today, we don't have any concerns this morning, but then we'll stop here at about 3 o'clock this afternoon and watch to our southwest as thunderstorms begin to develop and move northeastward. And then as we move into the evening hours here around 6 o'clock, we see scattered heavy thunderstorms over southern Indiana, Kentucky, extreme southern Illinois, back into southeast Missouri. We'll need to keep a close eye on this to see if any of those are severe as we move through the 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock hour, showers and thunderstorms continue. Notice there's not much going on back here over parts of southeast Missouri and southern Illinois. The bulk of this activity will be over extreme southern Illinois, the Boot Hill into Kentucky and Tennessee. Keep that in mind today. Your rain chances over our northern counties are much smaller than, say, our southern counties. And then we'll have a lull late tonight into tomorrow morning, but then additional showers and thunderstorms will form tomorrow afternoon, and you can watch them spread in from the southwest. We'll stop here about 8 o'clock on Thursday evening, widespread showers and thunderstorms over the region. Whether some of these are severe or not, we'll just have to monitor them, especially as we move into Thursday night and Friday morning. As the area of low pressure moves through the region, the cold front, the warm front moves northward, the cold front moves eastward, that could spark some severe weather, but again, we're just not sure about CAPE, whether we'll have enough CAPE energy for thunderstorms to become severe, but we'll keep a close eye on it. Lots to watch over the coming days, a lot of activity, a lot of rainfall, some severe weather possible. We will dry out Friday night, Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday with another chance of showers by Tuesday.